Hello, hello. Welcome back to Edgier Than Thou. Today, we're going to be looking at a video that makes me question my very existence and makes me wonder whether or not existing on this planet is really the right thing to be doing at the moment. As you may have noticed, uh, Netflix's Squid Game is the most popular show they've ever debuted on their program. In fact, it's one of the most popular shows around at all right now. And I just finished it, uh, and I thought it was pretty good. I, you know, mixed thoughts on different aspects and whatever. But some people want to take it in a completely different direction. See, this show is, at its very core, a critique of modern capitalism. That's not a controversial statement to make. It's pretty obvious. It's not even in the subtext at some points. If I have any criticism of the show, it's the fact that it lays it on real heavy what it's talking about. It is very much talking about capitalism. It is unbelievable that you could walk away from it and think anything else. And we're going to even show a little bit more uh, evidence just to make it abundantly clear that that's what this show is about. Ben Shapiro is here to argue that actually it's not about capitalism. And then I don't know anything else he argues. I've only watched the first few minutes of this video. So we're going to get started and see what arguments he has to offer us. The politics are extraordinarily far to the left. The basic idea is that capitalism provides so little opportunity that you would rather play a game where you might get shot just to make money than attempt to live out your life in the regular world. Okay, I actually wasn't expecting that so far. He's gotten this first little bit uh, correct. I, I'm honestly impressed. And there's a scene where the North Korean escapee is asked by another character, you, know, you escaped from North Korea, was it worth it? And the answer seems to be not really, which is kind of a strange take because North Korea is a giant gulag. If you make a show criticizing the regime in South Korea, it goes viral and ends up on Netflix. If you create a show criticizing the regime in North Korea, they strap you to the front of an anti-aircraft gun and then open fire. <laughs> So that seems to be a slight difference. It's really weird that Ben is being so defensive of South Korea right here. He's basically arguing this as a proxy for the United States, that if you criticize, or if you make a show criticizing the United States, right, you get popular on Netflix, but if you do that in North Korea, right, like they have to keep up this, this uh, line that North Korea is just like the absolute <clears throat> desolate, like end of the world, worst possible place, which to be fair, it basically is. Hi, editing me here. Uh, I think that a better way for me to phrase this uh, would be essentially that what he's doing uh, with this critique is pitting uh, South Korea and North Korea against each other as though the two can't both have problems, right? The show criticizes South Korea and then and in response, he basically says, well, yeah, but North Korea is bad and then brushes it off as though those two things can't both be true, right? His criticism of this entire part of the show is essentially like, oh yeah, well, it, things may be bad, but they, they could be worse. And th that's not really an argument because they're just basically saying that like, that her moving to South Korea wasn't an all entirely good decision because it turned out things were a lot worse than she was expecting. When you get to the ending episodes and you find out who are the VIPs who bet on who is gonna win and who's gonna lose the game, they're all American. There's not a good American in the entire show. See, he's getting defensive again. Uh, you're right that there's not a good American in this show because the show is set in South Korea and there aren't a whole lot of indebted American citizens there as far as I'm aware. You could make an identical critique of Breaking Bad claiming that there are no good Chileans in that movie because the main Chilean character is an antagonist, probably because most people in that show are going to be from the general vicinity that the show takes place in. You're just supposed to assume that the rich people are bad and the poor people are somehow good. The same thing sort of holds true in this show. All of the poor people are perceived as sort of innately more noble, even though the reality is that the poor people in the show, aside from the North Korean refugee, like the main character is a derelict gambler. He's a bad guy. I noticed that he uses the fact that the main character is a serial gambler as evidence that he's a bad guy. And I thought that was interesting because that kind of betrays his inability to understand what's going on in this show because he basically is arguing the exact thing that the show is critiquing, right? The show is like, conditions are so bad, people will do anything to get out of them. And then he shows an example of somebody doing that and it's like, look, that person is bad. That person is a loser. So like, of course he's not going to get the critique because to him, the fact that people are participating in this, the fact that people are making the decision to do something crazy to get out of terrible conditions just makes them bad. So in, in Ben's world, the idea of acting out of desperation is just completely foreign. But I just thought that was interesting to point out that he's just constitutionally incapable of understanding this critique because to him, if anything, Squid Game is a critique of poor people, not of the rich people exploiting them. It's actually an attitude that I see pretty often where 
You'll see someone who's doing something really exploitative and people will be like, oh yeah, well, I noticed that people are making bad decisions and participating in it. And it's like, yeah, cool. But I uh, am actually much more forgiving of a person who makes a an unreasonable decision than a person who makes an abusive or manipulative decision. But to Ben, those two things are not morally equal, but not in the right direction. So it seems like he's just gonna skip over the central metaphor of the show. Cause he got the first part right, that essentially the, the premise of the show is that the conditions that people are living under are so bad that they would rather be willing to sell the possibility of losing their lives in exchange for winning prize money that might be able to save them. That is, he, he got that correct. Um, and then basically glossed over it, basically just called it not a very meaningful critique of the system. And it seems like the only reason he has for that is because there's free speech in South Korea more so than in North Korea, which isn't really a great comeback, but okay, that's where we're at with that. Uh, but he skips over the other central metaphor because if you've seen the show, then you know one of the one of the lines that's repeated fairly often is essentially that the games are equal, that everyone is given an equal chance for victory and for survival, with the creator noting that that is obviously not the case. Um, he said, says as much as an in an interview, um, and also just basically makes the point that that's how he views the world right now. Now, I don't think that he's literally saying that the capitalist government as it exists is literally a series of games in which people are murdered systemically for making small errors. But I do think he's trying to point out that as much as we like to delude ourselves into pretending like everyone gets an equal start in life, people are coming at life from completely different starting points and with completely different conditions, and that sometimes the odds are just stacked against you. In several of the games in this show, people who are either physically unfit or unfamiliar with the game rules or have been injured in previous games are at a significant disadvantage to everybody else. Not only that, when people start to pick up on what's going on and they start to form you know, their own cliques or their own little gangs or whatever of physically stronger and more fit people, everybody else is at a significant disadvantage because now all of the people with the strengths that are very specific for this situation have conglomerated over here and everyone else has to basically make do with what's left. Honestly, I was expecting Ben, like other commentators right now, to try to argue that this show is a critique of communism, so I'm impressed that he didn't do that. And I'm not even making any prescriptive statements right now or trying to about the way that this economy runs or whether or not Squid Game is inaccurate or at least a relatively accurate critique of the system because that's just not what I'm here to do. I'm just trying to point out that this level of media analysis is childish at best. This is a like a ludicrously bad understanding of how media and critiques work. In order for Ben to communicate this idea to us, he pathologically has to misinterpret it and then give you the worst possible version of the arguments. And then he just has to respond with a vague kind of side dunk like, oh yeah, well, well, there's no free speech in North Korea, so left wing destroyed. All this to say, if you're getting your media analysis from Ben Shapiro, maybe consider not doing that. Um, I'm not a brilliant film critic by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, there are plenty of things that I absolutely missed about the show and things that I've missed about plenty of other ones. I mean, I'm not even totally sure whether or not I 100% agree with or even totally understand the messaging of the show because there's there's lots of different, you know, bits and pieces that I haven't, you know, have, didn't pick up on the first time and haven't picked up on yet. But this has been a relatively short one. I appreciate you sitting to the end. You should do the liking and subscribing thing. Who knows even if my fingers are in the right spot. They could like... I don't know, I could be like extending below the frame right now, but you should do all of that. And then you should continue watching things like this because it is good for me. And what's good for me is good, good for you, probably.